Lecture 1.9 is on the classification of regions questions one worksheet that is a smattering of past regions problems that will uh, look a lot like some questions you may see on your next test. Every test I give has some regions level questions and since this is honors regions chemistry uh, we're still working within some of the framework of the uh, questions you'll see. Uh, so in any case let's get started. Uh, so we have a question that says which sample uh, which which particle diagram represents a sample of one compound only and as you can see this is a classic way that they like to ask questions in regards to classification using pictures and we've done that in several different levels already okay so I have a compound they're asking for a compound we know it's made up of the same type of molecule and a molecule is two or more different atoms chemically combined so if I look here in two I see that well that is just the same type of atoms. This would, of course, be an element. Uh, this, number four, interesting enough, is two different elements. Here's one element, and here's the second. Now, interesting enough, they're showing the same element bonded to each other. This is an example of a diatomic element. Diatomic. Diatomic elements are the Hofbrinkles. Hofbrinkles are elements that bond to themselves. For instance, hydrogen, which is the H, oxygen is the O, F is the 2, Br is the bromine, uh, I'm sorry, F is fluorine, uh, bromine 2 is bromine, and N is the nitrogen, and the chlorine is chlorine 2. So these Hofbrinkles is a mnemonic I've made up just to remember those elements that love to bond to themselves. In any case, uh, you can see that E is also an example of a diatomic element. In any case, the question states only one compound. Therefore, we need to have the same molecule. And here's one molecule, and the rest of these molecules are the same. This is a mixture of two different compounds. Here's one compound, okay, and here is the other. It's a mixture of two compounds, but only one compound only. That would have to be the best answer would be uh, three, okay? And if I'm going too slow, I'm sorry, and I'm over it. Okay, any case, two. Which particle diagrams represents a mixture of element X and element Z only? Well, I need an element. So it's a group of the same type of X's, and X's are this type. We know they differ by actually protons and not shapes, but we're using models, and that's what they want you to do. Okay, Z is zero. So I want a mixture of two elements. Well, these aren't elements. These are different molecules, and molecules make compounds. So that's two different compounds. Okay, and... Um, number two is a another compound, but then atoms. Here is a mixture of different types of elements, a group of the same type, and then here I have uh, element. Uh, I have again the same compound, same molecules. All right. So the answer is just element X and element Z would be uh, choice three. Okay. Here is element uh, X is the dots and the Y's are here. And you might be finding this pretty simple. So three is the best answer. Okay, three. A sample of, uh, of unknown composition was tested in a laboratory. The sample could not be decomposed by physical or chemical means. On a basis of the results, the laboratory reported that the unknown sample is most likely what? Well, if it can't be broken down, decomposed is a fancy word for broken down by physical or chemical means, it must be the most simplest form of matter. And the most simplest form of matter is a bunch of the same type of atoms. You cannot break down into an, uh, an element into anything simpler that has its own unique set of properties. Compounds can be broken down into elements. Solution is made up of two or more substances that can be broken down, and a mixture, of course, is a solution as well. So number one is the answer. Four, which particle diagram represents a mixture of an element, a bunch of the same type of atoms, and a compound? So we want a mixture. And they give me the different atoms over here. So I want an element. Well, here is one element. But one's not the answer because this group right here is a second element. Even though they're bonded to themselves, it's still an element. This is not a compound. Like H2 is an element. It's diatomic elements. The group of the same type of atoms. Yes, they're bonded, but it's still the same group. So that's not it. So 
Same reason for two, that's a mixture of two different elements for the same reasons. That could be like H2 and O2 that we had in our walk around activity. Now, here is, an, uh, here is a compound, one compound, because it has two different, what? Atoms chemically bonded. The smallest part of a compound is a molecule. And here we have an element, a diatomic element. That's your answer. Four doesn't make any sense because it's just one it's a compound. So three is the answer. Moving right along. Number five, which statement describes a chemical property of hydrogen gas? Chemical property means when it does react, it makes something new. Well, we should know that burning means it combusts and reacts with oxygen, and that's a chemical change. Color doesn't change the chemical formula. Boiling something doesn't change the chemical formula. And checking out someone's density doesn't change the chemical formula. But burning, for instance, hydrogen, when it reacts with air, which is oxygen, would actually make water. And the word hydro means water. Gen means maker. And by the way, hydrogen means water maker. That's why they named it hydrogen. And that's the chemical reaction. You're making a new substance from previous ones. Okay. So the answer is one. Burning, combustion is a chemical change. Number six, which of the following particle diagrams best represents the same substance after physical change? Well, if it's a physical change, the chemical formula is not changing. This could be a gas. Notice the distance between the molecules because they're flying around. This could be a solid or a liquid. Notice the same chemical formula. So this could be the solid phase. This could be the gas phase. Notice the distance. The, the only thing that's different between these things, that these two boxes, are the physical distance. This is a different chemical formula. Different chemical formula. Different chemical formula. This is the same chemical formula, same molecules, just different distance between them. Three is the answer. Number seven. Which two particles represent mixtures of diatomic elements? Diatomic means bonded to itself. Okay, so the mixtures of diatomic elements, the best would be A. So A is clearly the answer. Um, two different elements. Here you have a molecule. Uh, whoa, what do they want? Two particles. Which two particle diagram? So they want a, a pair. Okay, so I'm looking at another answer. C, okay, has one element, a group of same type of atoms, and another. Okay, and mixture of diatomic elements. We want elements bonded to themselves. So A and C is the answer. And A and C is choice one. Again, diatomic just means an element bonding with itself. We have a bunch of those Hoch wrinkles. Okay, it doesn't matter if they're doing that. Eight, which of the following two substances cannot be broken down by a chemical change? Well, if they can't be broken down a chemical change, it's because they're already in their simplest form, and that's elemental form. Look at that. Different capitals, different elements, choice one. Nine, which sample represents a homogeneous mixture? That screams to me. Aqueous, mixed with water, dissolved. Choice four, or four, as we say in North Riverhead. And ten, which of these can only contains only one substance? A substance is a compound or an element. Well, salt water is a mixture. It's made up of salt and water, two different compounds. Distilled water, hmm, that means we boiled off the water and collected the pure water. Okay, that's our winner. That's a compound. Sugar water is two substances. That's a mixture. And rainwater is a mixture of all kinds of stuff that could be in there. All kinds of stuff. Four. I don't know why my voice did that. Sorry. Number 11. Which particle diagram represents only one pure substance? Only one, not a mixture. Mixtures are not pure substances. So no, this is a mixture of elements. Mixture of elements. Okay, this is a compound. Okay, or just googly eyes or something. So two is a compound, only one substance. Here is an element, two different types of elements. Two is the answer. Twelve, two solid samples, each contain sulfur, oxygen, sodium only. These samples contain the same color, melting point, density, and reaction with a... What am I reading this? It can be concluded that the two samples are the same. Let's read this again because I didn't do a good job the first time. Two solids contain, each contains sulfur, oxygen, and sodium only. These samples have the same color the same melting point, density, and reaction. Wow, they all have the same exact set of properties, okay? Then it must be concluded that it can't be a mixture. Mixture can vary of the different amounts. And if it was a mixture, these guys would retain their own individual properties. 
So if they have all the same properties when these are together, and that retaining their individual ones, it has to be a compound. Okay. All right. A beaker contains both alcohol and water. These liquids can be separated by distillation. Hey, that's what we did when we separated the Coke because the liquids have different boiling points. We're separating a mixture based on a physical property. Boiling points are physical. Solubilities would be for chromatography. Particle sizes. Hey, that would be for electrophoresis. Hey, rock on. 14. Bronze contains 90 to 95 percent copper and 5 to 10 percent tin. Because these percentages can vary, bronze is a mixture. Yeah, it's an alloy. Alloys of metals, believe it or not, are mixtures. And they can vary. Compounds can't. They have a definite ratio proportion. It's called a chemical formula. Okay. Which particle diagram represents a sample containing the compound CO? Carbon monoxide. That's one carbon to one oxygen. Hmm. That's the same element. That's two to one ratio. Here you go. That's, by the way, this is a solid. Remember that? Look at that. That's a regular repeating arrangement. A crystal. Here's a gas. Not a distance between. One to one ratio. Okay, so there's two is the best answer. Don't know why they don't say the W when you say answer. Any case, which diagram represents only a mixture of elements A and B? Uh, so elements A and B, so a mixture of elements. Well, it looks like to me that's C. Here's a compound. Here's just one element. Here's a mixture of two different diatomics. So just Z, Z, one. Okay, moving on. Which statement be describes a chemical property of the element magnesium? Chemical. It's about not boiling or phase changes. These are physical properties. No way. Magnesium conducts electricity. And that's pretty physical. You don't destroy magnesium by doing that. Magnesium is malleable. Well, hammering it into a thin sheet doesn't change its chemical formula, but magnesium reacting with acid will change its structure and make it become something new. That's a chemical property. Four. 18. Which subs can be decomposed by chemical means? Krypton. Antimony. Okay. These guys are elements. Okay. Tungsten element. This is kind of an unfair question, but methane. Okay. I would give you this question with chemical symbols. Methane is CH4. Okay. The rest of these are elements with only one capital. So three is the best answer. I wouldn't do that to you yet. 19. Which of the following balances equation is a chemical change? Hmm, H2O stays as H2O. That's physical. Okay, H2O becomes H2O. Physical, those are phase changes. H2O becomes ooh, a new substance. That's your chemical change. Okay, an H2O liquid becoming H2O solid. Of course, uh, freezing is a phase change. The chemical change isn't changing. At room temperature, a mixture of sand and water can be separated by filtration. It's a separatory. Uh, technique, and we've learned a bunch of them. Distillation, as it was in this, okay, we learned uh, chromatography. I was in class today. That was, that was a doohickey. Chromatography. What else? Chromatography, and uh, we learned about Distillation, chromatography, filtration. These are the ones I talked about. Okay. And, of course, evaporation we talked about. We talked specifically about um, uh, fractional distillation. Okay. any case, that's the ditto. I hope you found that pretty straightforward and a good review of Regent's questions.